Earlier this year, I played a game called Crystar, a stylish action RPG from Furu, and while I wasn't exactly blown away by the game and I found it disappointing overall, I was still pretty excited for the developer's spiritual successor, Cry Machina. The combat looked to have been given a major upgrade, and with an engine overhaul to Unreal, I was quite excited. But did Cry Machina right the wrongs of Crystar? Let's discuss. My name's Kevin from Save the Game Media, and in today's video, we're going to discuss Cry Machina. Before we go any further, I have to give a quick shout out to NIS America for providing a code for this review. Thank you so much. And if you're new here and a fan of day one reviews like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But without further ado, let's talk about Cry Machina. Cry Machina starts out with your character dying but you awaken 2,000 years in the future. Your personality has been inputted into a robotic frame, and this is currently how past humans are coming back to life. As it turns out, humanity actually came to an end about six months after you died, and they sent a rocket into space with eight machines called Deus Ex Machinas on them. Their task? Revive mankind. And this is where you come in. You're revived by the eighth Deus Ex Machina. You play as three female protagonists, Leban, Makoto, and Ami. Your task is to gain enough XP to become a real human. Unfortunately, not all the Deus Ex Machinas are on board with your plan, and you're going to have to take them and their lackeys out. Now, I actually really liked the story of Cry Machina. It's much more intriguing compared to its predecessor, and it has fantastic plot twists. Not just one, there are multiple times where you think you know what's going on, only to have the rug pulled out right from underneath you. You learn more about each character through flashbacks, usually as major story beats when you acquire more personality data, but I really enjoyed my time with the story. The gameplay loop of Cry Machina is quite simple and similar to other games I've been playing recently. You select missions from your hub area and you're put into an instance where you'll run through in a few minutes and kill a few enemies, usually a mini boss or a boss at the end of the level. Once you're back in the hub world, you can upgrade your characters or participate in tea parties. These are conversations between characters that will flesh them out. Some are required while others are optional, but they're all worth doing as they provide you with points you'll use to upgrade your characters. The star of Cry Machina, however, isn't the story. It's the actual combat. This is so much better than Cry Star. I was blown away. Fast, fluid, and flashy combos make this game not only a visual delight, but it feels fantastic to play. Perfect parrying and dodging allow you to punish enemies, add this to the combat system, and it is a chef's kiss. Each of your three main characters will play differently and have different strengths and weaknesses. Leban is super fast and can deal a lot of damage, but her health and defense is much lower, putting her in that glass cannon role. Ami is super slow, but hits like a tank. Her perfect dodge allows you to automatically counter attacks from enemies, although she is my least favorite to play as. She gets a little frustrating, and it feels like you can't really move, so you're constantly getting hit more than you want to. Makoto is my favorite. She's more of a balanced character. Kind of feels like Laban with attacking prowess, but with Ami's health. Each character, you're going to be able to equip two auxiliaries that are going to assist you in battle. These are used with the controller bumpers, and they give you additional attacks and power for your characters. You have things like saw blades, swords, guns, little turrets that can assist you. You'll activate those. Different status effects, different bonuses will come into play. I think the character customization and the builds in this game are really well done. It's super satisfying to go in and tweak your characters. You're also going to upgrade smaller stats with currency called Ego. You can allow for health regen or to minimize damage against weaker enemies or allow yourself to attack higher level enemies because normally your attacks will just miss. However, what isn't great in this game is the balancing and the absurd borderline offensive amount of grinding you are required to do. About halfway through the game, you'll find that the recommended level for missions starts to go up at a ridiculous pace. And what I mean by this is my level 60 character trying to take on a level 75 mission. This wouldn't be a problem if you actually got experience and if you could choose your character. The experience reward to you after a mission is so small. I'm talking hundreds per run per level when it takes at least when you get to the 60 to 70 range, three to 4,000 experience points per level up. 
But don't worry, you have three characters to try to put this non-existent experience into because you never know who's going to be required to use in the next mission. Oh, did you level up Makoto to 70? It'd be a shame if we made you use your level 58 Ami on the next mission. It's nonsense. I grinded for hours. I beat the quote, final boss, and I'm using air quotes here because much like Crystar, the end isn't the end. You get an ending, but if you want the true good ending to the game, you're going to have to load up that save data, and now you have to explore the level 90 plus area that's unlocked. And I tried. I tried for hours. I leveled up Makoto to 75, near 80. I maxed their stats to be able to hit higher level enemies. I switched to casual mode. It's just not seemingly possible without at least 20 more hours of grinding, which I don't have in me. Another cardinal sin of Cry Machina is some of these boss mechanics are so frustrating. Majority of the later game bosses have one-hit kill moves, which can often force you to redo the entire level. Add in everything else I just highlighted, and it feels like the game is actively against you. I play games for fun, for good story, and I don't play to be frustrated and have my time wasted, which unfortunately, for all of Cry Machina's positives, is a feeling you start to get. I wanted to love my time with Cry Machina, and I did for a good five hours. Fantastic action combat and a good story had me ready to sing this game's praises, but terrible balancing, an insane difficulty spike, and frustrating boss mechanics really tanked my experience, meaning unless you're a masochist, I can only recommend this game on sale. That's it. Those are my thoughts on Cry Machina. Let me know your thoughts down below if you're going to pick this one up. Until next time, my name's been Kevin. I'll see you.